Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer, and this is 30 years ago, March, when I first started my political thoughts, March the 4th, before getting involved in politics. March the 4th, 1979. First political writings. Uh, overheard while sitting in my lawyer's office. When you got money to burn, it's not hard to find someone to look after the fire. Well, another thought was that sex is play, can Puritans accept this? So that's the libertarian. And, and they want job creation? Start helping refugees. We could put our educated unemployed to work with a $2 billion housing teaching aircraft industry with an even bigger market. They, in turn, could work at all the jobs we won't. So there's lots of things. They could quickly learn newer trades. We need technologists, and with their taxed earnings, we can now save more of them at a time. There can be lots of work. There are billions of them out there needing to be saved. This is a savior move, offer to evacuate the most needy refugees. What a phenomenal job creation program. So, maybe after we help relocate all the scared people, we can spend less on war and devote maybe just a little more to the Savior Project. Let the Pentagon Institute the Savior Project by giving them more money, making them buy more tanks, and order them to use the tanks like tractors. So, after a few years on his tractor tank, we might talk them into dropping their gun turrets. If all the major countries would use their tanks as tractors for a month, then maybe next year two months, and the year after that three, well, who knows what could happen. So, by building shelters and providing food, clothing, education, and work, we're creating the right kinds of jobs that generate a deep inner satisfaction in the worker. Dealing is such a job, dealing cards. The service industry can be. I'm willing to share my Canada with any earthling who chooses to move, and better yet, who must move to survive. Yet I truly believe that prejudice is inherent in humans as is insecurity. Of course, at this time I didn't know what generated insecurity in the outside world. So there might be a psychological connection. I don't know. Cure insecurity, cure prejudice, or is it the other way around? Well, it looks like our elected representatives have run out of popular causes and are now using prostitution as a scapegoat. It seems as if Pierre Trudeau decides he needs a few Puritan votes and decides to crush prostitution. He's now following a proven loser strategy. Not that he might not be the first to succeed. He very well may be, but don't bet on it. Joe Clark jumps in and has to agree so as not to be labeled a libertine. And Ed Broadbent wants to go further and put both the hooker and the John in jail. And I say shy and less attractive people got a right to get laid and shouldn't be bothered. I don't understand this. Here's a man who's willing to pay 50 bucks to someone for his reasons, probably pleasure. And here's a woman who's willing to accommodate someone for her reasons, probably the 50 bucks. So... Uh, they aren't hurting me, and they aren't hurting me if they're discreet and pleasant about it. Their conduct doesn't shock me, for since the beginning of time, we've gambled and fooled around. It may shock some people, yet here's my elected assembly trying to put them in jail. As long as they're not bothering anyone, I must protest to my government that the prosecution of those two neighbors of mine is wrong, and I hope you can all quickly learn that the old solutions haven't worked, so a new approach may be necessary. We're going to waste an awful lot of time on cops, courts, lawyers, people's time, and note that you lawyers are the ones creating legal problems for people by creating more laws to police. So that evening... Uh, monogamy was probably quite good in times of wilderness and Old West exploration, but in modern times? So all I know is that there are lots of people out there who'd like to work in a casino, and all the politicians I've ever discussed this industry with agree, but say that it works too slowly. They seem resigned to their slowness. So on the 7th of March, 79, Bronson Bakery will attempt to make the first batch of my Termel Stone Ground Whole Wheat Cake. And it was basically the first Stone Ground Whole Wheat bread in the Ottawa area with a high concentration of bran because I believe the high roughage diet could prevent cancer and do a lot of other good things. And so then on the 8th, yes, the sample batch, it's great. 
and I hit some restaurants, and I was going to start peddling this first wheat cake. Of course, now they got all sorts of high brand, high roughage breads out there, but I was the first 30 years ago <laughs> in my area. So I thought it was great stuff. And, of course, here's my reasons. It helps prevent high cholesterol and heart attacks, constipation, hemorrhoids, varicose veins, gallstones, obesity, cancer of the colon, circulatory diseases, appendicitis, diverticulitis. And at one point, Health Canada came at me and said, you're not allowed to put helps prevent cancer on your bags. And I said, well, excuse me, but listen, when you put a high roughage into your food intake, it's like adding rocks into cement. It helps the flow get through there. If you put in just the cement, it's going to clog up, get constipated, take two, three, four days to get through the system. But if you got a lot of roughage, squeeze, 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 it gets through in one or two days. So the carcinogens in the stool that sit in the colon for a long time causing a certain amount of cancer and disease are less potent because they're spread through a larger volume and they go through faster ex reducing the exposure to cancer so you're not going to tell me that it doesn't prevent cancer by doing that and they walked out and I never saw them again so finally on the 17th of March I got my rent a table because I'm going to be running have game rule travel casinos and my real purpose in this election is to legalize gambling. So then on the 20th I'm talking about an ad campaign with my accent on have game will travel and uh, I'll be having private parties, stags, non-licensed receptions and banquets. I'll go anywhere they want to have a game and I'll bank it. And rue the day you hear that our, oh, armories have been ripped off by some radical group with automatic weapons. Rue the day Idi Amin gets the bomb, so we need a central earth authority. And I've never been scared of a central earth authority, as long as it had its own chips and wasn't in debt to the loan sharks. <laughs> so, and a political platform I have to set up. Streamlining justice, well, that's one answer. If the courts weren't full of gamblers, hookers, and dope smokers, the real violent thugs would have speedier trials. Plus, they got rules that if the trial lasts too long, they're found not guilty. And that's one of the second, that's one of the, that is the super second stupid thing in Western law, is that two wrongs make a right. So you do something wrong, but if they then do something wrong to you later, you get off which is pretty stupid, but that's Western justice. So since courts are clogged, a criminal can usually expect to wait many months before action takes place. Bail reform lets him back on the streets almost immediately after arrest. He now has plenty of time to hide evidence, intimidate witnesses, ye even threaten or kill them. I'm a, speaking from experience, too. I've had bad people rob me, you know, and threaten me. If the courts were not clogged with the drug cases, the gambling cases, and the hooking cases, the courts could probably deal with the violent criminals right away. There'd be no need for all the lawyers' time spent. So, uh, finally, on the 25th, we're starting to look ahead. And who's got the experience of looking ahead? Gamblers have practice. Mathematician gamblers have a guidance system and have practiced looking into the future. You know, so we're going to finally on the 26th of March, uh, the press is doing our policing for us. It should be enough. It's starting to work now. I remember a time when I thought that all we'd have to do was have police armed with photo guns where they got our TV guns and all I get your picture taken doing the robbery. There's no need to shoot you no more. There's the evidence. <laughs> gotcha. So, press will end up doing that. And finally, politically, I'm a logical Democrat. I listen to your argument. I present mine. You rebut. I can't answer. So I switch. Next debate. I listen to his argument. Present mine. No rebuttal. And that's what logical democracy seemed like to me. So, we're getting ready for the fundraising casino night. I'm having a big one at the Prince of Wales apartment party complex. Three blackjack tables. I got announcements going out to all my friends. It's going to be a big disco casino party. And, of course, the cops have been threatening me. They say they don't care that the Supreme Court of Canada in the Rockert decision says that one night stands can't be gaming houses. They're going to bust me anyway. So, with this election coming on, and who knows the kind of action would happen should they bust me on my April Fool's game, and that'll come up in my next post. But one final thing is a poem from those days that I found, one of the best poems ever, by William Ernest Henley, Invictus, which means unconquered, 1849-1903. 
Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade. And yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments my scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am captain of my soul. William Ernest Henley